My name is Tom Thomas Lekeborg. Um, I am here as a technical student. I come from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, and I work in the IT department. Like the inter introduction said. So, the section I'm working in, we are moving Java web applications from virtual machines into Kubernetes, because it's the future. And uh, for them to run in Kubernetes, they need to run in containers. So my project at CERN is to create uh, these containers. Um, the container needs to be, uh, or the Docker image, rather, needs to be pretty uh, complex, because it needs to do the same, have the same integrations that the web applications had when running in virtual machines. So uh, this is a good case to put up some heavy testing around it, the development process to make sure that it works. <coughs> so, nope, I'll do this. Um, in my talk, I want to go through how I test the image in uh, GitLab CI. So I'll start with uh, an overview of the features I use, and then um, go through three of the tests uh, specifically, and then uh, how you can use GitLab CI to build multiple versions of the same image, and then end with uh, how I hope to improve uh, this uh, process in the future. Um, I realized while writing this talk that I want to say way more than I can say in 15 minutes, so there are some bonus slides at the end, if you're really interested, that show some more specific examples of what I'm going to talk about. So. Firstly, uh, the features used. Uh, we're using GitLab CI, like it says in the title, and um, using GitLab CI in conjunction with the GitLab container registry, so we write the code for the image in the GitLab, and we test it in GitLab CI, and we deploy it to GitLab container registry. So you have the whole, everything is in GitLab, and uh, we can host the image close to the test, which is amazing. Uh, we have our own private runners. Um, this is because we need a, a privileged runners, GitLab runners. Um, there are shared ones for CERN, but they're currently not, not performant enough uh, for us currently to have our own. Um, I personally am a, a heavy user of Git, GitLab runner exec. It's a subcommand of GitLab Runner that lets you reproduce a job of your pipeline locally on your computer. So without having to push up to GitLab all the time, you can check if your pipeline is working and you can debug it. And then the two biggest features we're using is uh, our uh, Docker and Docker and artifacts. And I have a separate slide for those because they're bigger topics. Docker and Docker, if you're not familiar, it's when you put Docker inside of Docker. Uh, so when you're running a Docker daemon inside of a Docker daemon, this allows you to, from a Docker container, run Docker commands and uh, spin up new Docker containers. This is very nice for testing. It is a controversial topic, um, but yeah, it's nice for testing um, because it allows you to, to spin up containers in your test um, in a isolated daemon uh, that you can do whatever you want with. The next slide shows what I mean. Uh, this tries to show you what I mean. So uh, you have the GitLab runner host, and you have it, it, it has its own daemon. And then when the runner host gets a job from GitLab, it will spin up a pair of containers. Uh, the job container, which is what is actually running your, uh, your code, there's the test code, and a Docker and Docker service container, which, which is where your inner daemon is running. Um, so with Docker and Docker, you can spin up multiple jobs with the same scripts without them interfering. So here, uh, it's using the same names, which is a trivial example, but it shows what I mean. It's using the same names between the two jobs, but they have their own daemon, so it's no problem. This goes as well for uh, exposed ports and the volumes and stuff like this. Um, so it's very cool. There are some pitfalls. I cannot go, go into them, but I list them at the, in the bonus slides. Um, and then we are heavy users of artifacts. So we use them to pass the Docker image in between the test stages. Uh, so we build the image first, and then we pass it to a testing stage before passing it to a push stage, where it's uh, only then is it pushed up to the registry. Uh, so if the image doesn't pass our tests, it's never pushed up to the registry, so you don't have crap in the registry. Um, to do this in GitLab CI, you have to do this trick. You have to treat it as a tarball. Um, so using this Docker save, which will make the image into a tarball that you can later load in the next stage. Um, this is what the pipeline looks like from our perspective. It's not so, it's just to give an like a overview of what it looks like. Here you can see something failed, everything is fine. Um, an individual pipeline run looks something like this. There's a, well, there's a asterisk, because this is, not, this is a, an older picture from my pipeline, but it shows the, the concept. So there are four stages. We first lint um, all of the source code that goes into the image to make sure that there's no silly mistakes, so we catch them early. 
And then we build the image and pass it as an artifact to the test and push stage. Each test is run in its own job with its own Docker daemon, so it's completely isolated in that way. And uh, the push stage is only run if all of the other stuff uh, succeeds. Um, this is, there's an asterisk because the pipeline actually looks more like this currently, because we are doing the all jobs after the link job we're doing for two versions of the image we need to duplicate. So here's building for 8.5 and mine of the underlying software that is inside of the container. Um, so next, I want to go through the three of the, oh no, I have some facts first, yes, great. Um, yeah, so this whole pipeline, it takes about 30 minutes. Um, this is not, this is my gut feeling. It, it, it goes up and down, but currently it's about 30 minutes. Uh, there's 26 uh, jobs in the pipeline, which is quite a lot, I would say. And the biggest time stealer for us is the passing of the artifacts in the Docker save and load, so it's worth noting. If you find a, an alternate solution to this, then, then the pipeline will run much faster. All right, so that's a, like a general overview of the whole pipeline. Now I want to go through three of the tests in uh, a bit more detail. Uh, the first one is using a tool called GUS, and GUS is a testing tool uh, it's a lightweight server spec it des describes itself as. Um, I like to call it a lightweight desired state testing tool. It's a tool that you, you give it a YAML file with the requirements for your image, and it will, uh, it's able to assert or check if your image meets those requirements. Digos has a subcommand called Digos, and uh, with Digos, you give it an image directly. So you, you give it an image in a YAML file, and it will spin it up using magic and check that it works. So the, the kinds of tests you can do are, you can do, okay, does this user exist? Uh, is there a file that's not so interesting? What is very interesting, you, you can run arbitrary commands and expect output. You can check for open ports, and you can check for HTTP uh, endpoints and check that the uh, correct stuff is running at those endpoints. The configuration file for this tool looks like this. Here I'm defining that I want there to be a user called Tomcat, and it should have shell has been no login. And I want there to be a health check and endpoint uh, listening on 8080, and it should have something like I'm running in the body. Uh, and when you run the tool, it looks like this. You will notice that it looks a lot like a Docker run command. It tries to mimic the same, the same uh, interface. So DGOS run, and then you can pass environment variables and mount just as in Docker run, and you give it the image to test. And you get output like this. Hopefully it's, yeah, it's readable, nice. Um, here, it was able to assert that yes, there's a health check application. You got the 200. You can also do more uh, fancy stuff like here I'm uh, grepping for, uh, where is it? Yes, we have to do this uh, step in our build process to compile some native libraries. It's a, a bit complicated, so it's very nice to be able to test that it actually works. We do this simply by grepping the logs of the container. Um, yeah, so that's Goose. Next up is the most complicated test we have. Um, our image needs to integrate with the CERN single sign-on uh, service. So single sign-on being when you try to access a protected resource and redirect it to someplace else to log in. Um, um, we need to assert that given a, a valid web application and a valid identity provider being the place you type in your password, password in this process, uh, the image should be able to, a user should be able to log in. <laughs> it's a, a good thing. So. We could be running this test against the CERN identity provider, uh, but that would be bad for two reasons. Firstly, we're spamming the CERN identity provider, which is bad. Secondly, if the CERN identity provider changes, all of our previous uh, commits are no longer testable in the same way because the, they assume a different state from the identity provider. So we're using a tool, uh, Keycloak. It's a big security project that happens to work very well as an identity provider that you can configure through JSON. So we spin up Keycloak in a container. So it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a mock, it's an actual identity provider. We spin it up in a container along with our application and mount in a test application that just spits out the information it receives about the user. Uh, and then we have the step setup, execute, teardown. So this looks like this. Uh, during the setup stage, this is inside of, you can run this from a pipeline. This is the power of Docker and Docker. You can do Docker run from inside a pipeline. We spin up uh, an instance of our image and along with the Keycloak image, which is the identity provider, we point our image uh, to the, yeah, 1990. We point it to the identity provider. And uh, so these two spin up and run. And uh, to execute the test then, we emulate the SSO 
flow. So you try and access something, you're redirected, you log in, you're redirected, and now you can access it. Um, we do this, and you might think you need a, like a complicated uh, browser emulator to do this, but it turns out you can do it with three curls and some sad foo. Uh, so that's what we're doing to keep it simple. And then uh, when we have run the tests, we tear it down. So uh, important for me to note here is that we dump the container logs to the build log so that in the future we can look back and check if our uh, tests succeeded but under false pretenses, which is nice. And then there's the LDAP test. Uh, our image needs to provide LDAP authentication for some older applications that will be running in it. Uh, so we need to test this as well, and it's done in much the same way as the, as the SSO test, uh, except it's, instead of spinning up our own um, identity provider, which is an SSO thing, we spin up our, old, our own LDAP server with test data. Uh, so we, again, we isolate ourselves from the central CERN LDAP server with these fancy containers. And uh, I wanted to include a snippet because it looks very clean. Uh, so a fake user with a fake password should get a 401. A real user with a real password should get a 200 and so on. And this is just bash. You can barely tell. <laughs> it's a nice wrapper. Okay. So that was um, a look at three of our tests. Next, I want to try and show you how you can use GitLab CI to build multiple images. So uh, you might think that you could just copy paste all the code to build one image and change the versions and uh, you will now be building two images. Yes, you can do that, but you will be doing horrible code duplication. So you want to somehow template and in GitLab CI, um, you are then limited to extends and include or anchors and references. Uh, I, I mentioned here the build matrix. If you are familiar with the build matrix, GitLab CI does not have it. This is a way nicer way to do it than other systems like Travis has this. But uh, in GitLab CI, you have to uh, emulate it yourself or make it yourself using this. So extends and include is newer and nicer, but it's not supported by this exec thing that I really like, so we use anchors and references. So this is what I'm going to show you. Here's the concept. Uh, you create a hidden job. So you say that this job will have image docker, blah, blah, blah. And then later you can reference an anchor to that hidden job to, to inject uh, the, um, um, the contents of that job. So this, in the end, when this is rendered, my job will have image docker, so it can run docker info. And you can imagine that this is nice for to reduce uh, uh, having to repeat yourself everywhere, because anywhere you want to use docker, uh, you can just inject this. Uh, you can take this way, like, you can take this um, one step further, further by defining all of your jobs like this. So um, what we do is we have, for each test we want to run, we have a hidden job. And then for each version we want to run that test for, we inject this uh, hidden job into a derived job like this, along with variables that customize the execution of the test. Uh, this is in the bonus slides if you really want to see it. And it ends up looking like this. So to build for 8.5, we inject a common uh, hidden job along with the uh, a hidden job containing, or a hidden, ah, it's called a hidden job, containing uh, variables that define, the, that customize this job to execute with 8.5. So the only thing that is um, different from these two is this line and this. Uh, so it's a little bit ugly, but this is the way you have to do it in GitLab CI, it turns out. Okay, so uh, I want to end with how I plan to improve this in the future. And uh, a big thing is to try and get unprivileged runners to work. Currently, to use Docker and Docker, or not currently, but to use Docker and Docker, you need privileged runners. And this is a security concern. This is the reason why we have our own private runners, is uh, we don't want to affect others with the kind of the setup we're using. So um, if we could make uh, this Docker, this test that use Docker run uh, work without Docker and Docker and use unprivileged uh, runners, that would be very nice. And uh, I want to mention these two tools. Container Structure Test is a tool very similar to GUS, with a huge uh, advantage being that it can run some of the tests without the Docker daemons. You don't need Docker and Docker. It can view the image as a file system, uh, mount the file system of the image or something, and you can run tests that way. And then Clare, which is to scan 
you can scan your image on each push for uh, CVEs and stuff like this. And if you check out my references, there's a link to the GitLab CI documentation. And setting it up in GitLab CI, it, takes, it took me less than a minute. And it, it's very easy to get up and running. Uh, so I hope you got something out of this talk. And uh, thank you so much for listening. Thanks very much, Thomas.